House Concurrent Resolution 3006 was introduced by Representative Casper and other House and Senate sponsors. House Concurrent Resolution 3006 is a concurrent resolution calling for a convention for the purpose of amending the United States Constitution to impose fiscal restraints on the federal government and limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. Mr. Speaker, your Government and Veterans Affairs Committee recommends due pass on House Concurrent Resolution 3006 by a vote of nine yeas, five nays, and zero absent not voting. Mr. Speaker. Representative Lauser. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the Assembly. Your House GVA Committee brings House Concurrent Resolution 3006, the Article 5 Convention of the State's Resolution. Article 5 is one of the seven articles signed at the convention creating our Constitution on September 17, 1787, ratified June 21st of 1788. A quick review of the seven articles references includes Article 1, the Legislative Branch, Article 2, the Executive Branch, 3, the Judicial Branch, 4, the States, Article 5, the Amendments, which is the second shortest of all the articles, Article 6, debts, oaths, and finally, Article 7, ratification, which is just one line, ratification of the Constitution. This application is expressly subject to the following. It confers no power to the Congress other than to call such a convention, which includes naming a date, time, and place for such a convention. Congress shall perform its duty of calling the convention only upon receipt of applications from two-thirds of the legislatures of the several states. Congress does not have the power or authority to determine any rules for governing of a convention, nor do they have the authority to set the number or name the delegates to the convention. The power to name delegates remains exclusively with the state legislature. An amendment convention of the states means that the state shall vote on the basis of one state, one vote. One state, one vote. The convention must not be limited to the, the convention must be limited to three and only three topics and no other. And this application made with the expressed understanding that an amendment that in any way seeks to amend, modify, or repeal any provision of the Bill of Rights is not authorized. The three topics are limited to the following. Imposing fiscal restraints on the federal government, limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, and limit the terms of office for its officials and for members of Congress. Congress may determine whether proposed amendments are ratified by the 38 state legislatures or by 38 ratifying conventions, but in either case, proposals must be ratified by three-fourths of the states or 38 states. That means that 13 states could block any proposed amendment, and actually only one chamber within those 13 states, not both, could block. And the Legislative Assembly may provide further instructions to its delegates and may recall delegates at any time for breach of duty, something that North Dakota has already passed. So arguments for the Convention of the States. The states control the Article 5 convention process from beginning to end. The call we are discussing with respect to Congress simply sets the date, time, and location. The state legislatures control the selection and commission of their delegates. Congress cannot use its Article I powers to control the Article V Convention. In fact, why would Congress even bother to make a legally doomed effort to try to control the Article V mechanism when it can simply propose their own amendments under Article V power at any time? No matter who proposes amendments, and by the way, all 27 amendments have been proposed by Congress, the requirement of 38 states for ratification guarantees that only amendments supported by a wide majority of Americans could become a part of our Constitution. The very first Article 5 application was passed by Vir the Virginia legislature in November of 1788. In fact, logic and history tells us Article 5 did not exist during the 1787 convention, Constitutional Convention. It only existed as a tool created within our Constitution, which was ratified the following year. The states could propose specific language, for instance, a balanced budget amendment, but then only the first state that has drafted that language can have meaningful debate and deliberate the wording. We must all recognize a few things. The United States grants us, the state legislators of the several states, power to propose amendments. What's being proposed here are limiting powers to the federal government and Congress. Who in their right mind would not recognize 
the Congress would never propose amendments that would limit its own power. This is the tool given to us, the state legislatures. Legislators, you've probably been receiving emails saying vote against a CONCON. Since this is not a constitutional convention or a CONCON, the creators of those emails are either A, unaware of the difference between a convention of the states and a constitutional convention, or they're deliberately distorting the facts of a convention of the states by calling it something it is not. Mr. Speaker, I speak with some experience as this past summer I was fortunate to participate in the first of its kind mock Article 5 Convention of the States. Getting 34 states to agree on language in both their House and their Senate chambers, then coming up with proposed amendments to be debated and passed by a majority at the convention, then getting 38 states to ratify in both their House and Senate chambers is a monumental task. Since returning from Virginia, I've been thinking of a good analogy when discussing this process, and the best that I've got is this. One can view the Constitution as a toolbox, and as legislators, our toolbox has one available tool. Consider that Article 5 tool a hammer, and Congress are the nails. It's up to the several states and state legislatures to determine which, if any, and when, if ever, the nails need the hammer. Members of the North Dakota House of Representatives, the only question you must ask yourselves regarding 3006 is this. Who do you trust more, Congress or yourself? I urge a green vote. 69 yay, 18 nay, 7 absent not voting. House Concurrent Resolution 3006 is declared passed. like the kindest, most welcoming people who have made me feel empowered.